Hey, what's up, y'all? Millie Pear Tree here. Today, we're gonna make my low country collard greens. They are a one pot wonder of salt, fat, acid, and heat. I like to call my collard greens the come on in the room dish. My church people, you gonna get that line. It is so warming and it's everything that you'll need to feed your soul. So low country collard greens are the process of cooking collard greens low and slow. They also say that it's the technique in the deep south. In this chapter, I'm gonna show you the ingredients, how to cook your collard greens, and in the end, I'm gonna show you how to eat your collard greens. So what we always like to do is have our pot ready for us. So I'm gonna turn on my pots. I'm gonna turn it on a medium high heat, and I'm gonna add some oil to it. Now you can add olive oil, you can add extra virgin olive oil because this is the portion where we're gonna saute our onions. So we're gonna heat some oil into our pot and while that's coming up, I'm going to cut our collard greens. So collard greens, beautiful leafy greens and you can cut as much or as little of the stem out as you want. So you can pull them back, you can pull out some more of the membrane. I like to leave some of it in there only because it adds more flavor to the collard greens, but feel free to take as much or as little of it out as you would like. I didn't grow up on collard greens, actually. I grew up eating mustard and turnip greens. And mustard and turnip greens are very sandy and gritty. And I remember it was one Thanksgiving, I think I was about maybe 19, 20 years old, I came home from college and my mom was like, did you wash these greens? And I said, yeah, I did. I was like, I rinsed them. And she's like, no, girl, you gotta wash the greens. So the technique of mustard and turnips, you'll put them in the sink, you'll fully submerge them in water. You could add some salt. It'll pull out all the sand and grit. So before we cut our collard greens, we're gonna get our onions in this pot. We're gonna saute them. And we're gonna add all of our seasonings. Some onion powder, some garlic powder little crushed red pepper flakes. And I'm gonna lightly salt it because we are gonna add some salt cured meat to it. And this is just gonna pull out some of the water from those onions. And I love fresh cracked black pepper. Okay. We're gonna give this a little saute. Get it around in the pot. And I'm just gonna throw my turkey right in here while that's going. Now, ooh, smells, see? Smells good already. We didn't even do anything and that smells good already. Ain't do nothing. So our collard greens. We take our beautiful leaves, nice and clean. I did leave a little bit of the stem on, not too much. Like I said, you could totally pull off some more of the stem if that's what you like. And we're gonna lay them flat on the counter. And we're just gonna give it like a little roll. Them all together, just roll them up, roll them up. Just like patty cake, roll them up, right? And we're just gonna cut them. Now you can tear it if you like. Make sure you tuck those fingers in because we don't want to cut ourselves, right? And we're just gonna cut them and give them a chop. Cut our collard greens. For the beauty of it, they're already clean. since our greens are already cool, we have our onions nice and sauteed in our pot with our smoked turkey. We're gonna start adding some of our collards. So a lot of times when people make collard greens, they'll boil their smoked turkey for hours until it falls off the bone. This is the same process. You can just throw it right in there. Cause we're gonna add liquid on top of it. We're gonna add enough of this stock to cover all of the greens. Oops. We're gonna bring this to a boil. And we'll do it with the lid on. So look at that. So we are at a rolling boil. And this is the process where if you have more collard greens, we cook some down, you can add some more. You'll stir it to make sure you get all your collard greens in the pot. Nothing is touching the bottom, so we don't have to worry about anything sticking, burning, or scorching. So now we're gonna turn our heat down to about a medium, medium low. And we're gonna just let these greens go until the turkey starts to fall off the bone. My favorite part of the collard greens 
Of course, it's the collard greens, but it's that liquid gold in the bottom of the pot, which is the pot liquor. So you know how when you're not feeling too well and you just need something that's gonna warm you up and just make you feel great. Like that's the equivalent of the chicken noodle soup. It's the pot liquor on the bottom. It's salty, it's briny. It has that smoked meat flavor and that heat from the crushed red pepper flakes. I mean, it's just the best part. And even after you take your collard greens out and you enjoy your meal, always save the pot liquor because you can use it for other recipes. Like, you know, if you're doing like some fried cabbage, you want some extra moisture, like some candied green beans, or just drinking it in a cup like some tea. So I love pot liquor. Oh, so look at our collard greens. It's been about an hour or so. You see how dark they're getting? And we'll kind of know what's done when all of our meat starts to pull off of our bone and it's gonna get a little bit darker. I like it nice and dark and rich. And the beauty of collard greens is you can't overcook them. So our collard greens have been going for about two hours or so. Um, at this stage, you know, the meat should be falling off the bone. So we're gonna take a look-see to see where we are. Oh, pretty. Look at how gorgeous. Look, meat falling off the bone. Absolutely gorgeous. So this is why I like to call it a one pot wonder because you have some meat, you have some greens in here. And since we did use the turkey wing, I don't like the skin. If you wanna eat the skin or if you wanna fry it up, make a little chicharron, feel free to do that. Not my thing, but we'll, we'll pull it out. And I'm gonna pull out these bones in the skin. Pull off that extra meat off the bone. Look, you don't have to do anything. That's how you know your greens are gonna be good. All this flavor is infused in here. You may or may not have that skin. Like if you use the neck, it'll just totally fall off. But absolutely gorgeous, beautiful. That's real good. To finish it, I'm going to add some roasted red peppers. It adds a little bit more brininess, the same way vinegar would, and some beautiful color. All right, so now we're going to taste to make sure all of our flavors are here. We know that the greens are tender because they're super dark. We know that everything is cooked through because the meat fell off the bone. The only thing we're tasting now is to see if we have to readjust our seasoning. Oh, that's good. That's all right, I don't need no hot sauce or nothing. So when you pop, that's a similar of what a sommelier would do with wine. You know, you gotta taste it on all four corners. Salt, fat, acid, heat. There you go, boom. Make sure you get some of that meat in there. Make sure you get some of that turkey in there. Some of the roasted red pepper. Don't forget, we gotta get some of that pot liquor. Cause I'm gonna sop it up with some of this cornbread. You know, I just love the liquid, the pot liquor, because it's like gravy. You know, like, and then you dip the cornbread into the pot liquor, and it's like the equivalent of biscuits and gravy. So let's go in and taste. So good. I already know it's good. Don't forget, I tasted it already. I'm just gonna eat it now, be a little. Eat some before the company come over. Give me a little dippy dip. Absolutely delicious. The briny spiciness of collard greens, the sweet cornbread. This is totally giving me tomato soup and grilled cheese vibes all day. So in this chapter, you've learned the ingredients. You learned what to look for in collard greens. And I wanna know what else would you add? I added non-traditional roasted red peppers, but it's most important that you make it your own. Because why? You're the embodiment of infinite possibilities. <laughs>